Welcome to yet another episode in the Amiga CD32 review project. The game in question this time is Brian the Lion, developed by Reflections and published by Psygnosis in 1994. I have to say that I was somewhat excited going into this review. I mean, this game was created by the developers of the famous Shadow of the Beast games, which are widely known to be excruciatingly beautiful but unplayable games, so I didn't really know what to expect. In Brian the Lion you play as the eponymous Brian, the king of the jungle. The game itself offers no backstory, but by reading the manual you find out that Brian's position as king is being threatened by Giza, a dragon who has kidnapped Brian's best friend, Chris the Crystal. Giza kidnaps Chris in order to use his prismatic powers to 1. make himself more beautiful, because he's quite hideous, and 2. to hypnotize all the jungle creatures and crown himself king of the beasts. This won't do of course, so you set out to defeat Giza and his horde of brainwashed followers. The good news is that Brian the Lion is more playable than the Shadow of the Beast games. The bad news is that it's actually only slightly more playable. That's how I felt about the game after playing it for half an hour, and I almost put down the controller at that point. But like when I was playing Beavers on the CD32 a while ago, I stuck with it and gave it some more time, and I ended up appreciating my time with Brian. Sure, the platforming could have been a little more tight. Sure, the damn coconuts are incredibly annoying. And you have to move forward very, very slowly in this jungle, otherwise you'll get a coconut in your head. But the game has some charm. The graphics are cute and enjoyable, and once you get a hang of it, the platforming is all right as well. There are a few too many leaps of fate though, a thing I really hate in platform games, but not enough to ruin the game completely. Brian has some special abilities that you can switch between. A roar that stuns some enemies and blows others off the screen altogether. A speed power-up that makes him run faster. And a jump power-up that makes him jump higher and further. These abilities can be upgraded throughout the game, but in the early stages that I played they weren't that important. It's a nice touch though, and something you'll surely make use of further on in the game. But let's take a look at what the reviewers back in the day had to say about Brian the Lion. Amiga Power really hated Brian the Lion and spent all of their two-page review talking about what they dislike in the game. They give it a 42% score, writing that It's desperately trying to be Super Mario World, with a similar world structure based on finding different exits from each stage. But Reflections have made exactly the same mistake that almost everybody makes when they try to copy the Super Mario games. They spot the cute graphics, they spot the hidden worlds, they spot the basic game structure, they spot the bouncy music, but what they all somehow manage to miss is the painstaking perfection of, hold on to your hats, the gameplay. Amiga Format didn't like Brian's game either, and they gave it a 49% score, writing that, Brian the Lion is certainly big enough and bold enough to stave off the fiercest competition, but unfortunately it's also boring enough to send you to sleep. Not everyone hated Brian though, as the one gave the game an 82% score. But reading the review, it seemed that they didn't really like the game after all. They liked the graphics and they liked the sound and they liked the overall idea of having this platformer, but I don't think they liked the game. Just listen to this. This is the ending of their review. I'd be lying if I said that I hadn't deliberated long and hard over my overall mark for Brian the Lion, because at the end of the day, for all the good points in the game, there's still something missing. It's quite obvious that a hell of a lot of time and thought has gone into Brian the Lion, and it's without a doubt a very good platform game. It just lacks that certain something. I wouldn't say that I hated Brian the Lion, but I wouldn't say that I loved it either. If I didn't have any other games for my CD32, I'd play it, and probably learn to enjoy it, but I can't award it a very high score. The gameplay just isn't fully there, and for me, gameplay is king, so I can't give this game more than 2 out of 5.